and it makes my skin crawl and I can't stand doing it. However, I know this is how I will make way more sales. Welcome back earners. As always, this is Matt from On Target Earnings. Today we are talking about four changes you can make right now to start making more sales and stop being so emotionally attached to whether or not the deal closes. As revenue professionals, most of us know that the power dynamic is a bit skewed for the prospect because they are the ones who are going to decide whether or not we succeed, whether or not they sign, whether or not they buy. We feel like they have all the power. And here's a news flash. They do have all the power. As we always coach here on this channel though, don't forget, you control the path, they control the decision. So there's one fatal flaw that about 90% of the salespeople have in my experience. And that is that their prospect can smell that they want the deal. Their prospect feels the attachment, the emotional attachment that the rep has to getting the deal closed. So what? They know that I want to close the deal. I'm in sales. Isn't that obvious? Not exactly. This goes back to the same old law that we all know to be true, which is that we want what we can't have. If we seem too readily available, too eager to make a sale, too enthusiastic, too exciting, it starts to feel like these are the sales of yesteryear and they're not going to buy. You're probably asking yourself, Matt, what am I supposed to do? This is how I put food on the table. This is how I determine whether or not I fill my dreams is whether or not I make the sale. Today, we're going to discuss four simple tactics that you can use that even if you are so emotionally attached to the deal, the prospect will never know and you'll inevitably make way more sales. The first way to make sure that your prospect doesn't feel that you are emotionally attached to the deal or the outcome is to early on in the sales call, say something that is completely disarming to them. I certainly appreciate the time that we're taking here today. I'm not exactly sure if we're gonna have what you're looking for or thanks for the candor about why you're looking at our solution. As you mentioned, you're already pretty far along in the process. So I doubt there's anything that I can say to persuade you otherwise, but you know, we'll see what we can do. These little tweaks. Instead of saying, oh, I'm super excited about what we're going to show you today. I think you're going to love it. Blah, blah, blah. Everyone's like, whoa, who is this person? All you got to do is make them feel comfortable that you don't really care one way or another. You're not here to pressure them and you're not even sure if this is going to fit. But hey, I mean, you're a nice person and you're willing to try. Strategy number two, always say what you would coach someone else to say. That's because most of us are way too silly to listen to our own advice, even though we know it's the right advice. If your accountability partner within your sales org came to you looking for some advice about how to move a deal forward, how to overcome an objection, how to handle a tricky procurement agent, I know that you're going to give them excellent advice. I also know there is a greater than 50% chance that you don't follow your own advice in that same exact scenario. It's a performing art, no different than playing the piano or playing basketball or football or debate club. You make the big bucks for a performing art and making sure that when people try to distract you and people try to make it harder and harder for you to get to the end outcome, your goal is to play that masterpiece on the piano and have everyone stand up and cheer. Your goal is to put that orange ball in that cylinder as many times as possible, get people to stand up and cheer. In sales, it's no different. We are performing art. Different objections are getting thrown at us and it is our goal to get as many people from here to signing on the dotted line. So while we all feel like we're a unique snowflake and something super special to us is the reason we are breaking the rules, just do what you would coach someone else to do if they were asking you for advice and you will find you do a much better job. Now this can seem really hard because we wanna be liked, we want people to care about us. That's why I'm telling you, remind yourself that it is a game. Especially in this new world of remote selling, it's much easier for you to do this. If you're in inside sales, you can make someone's Zoom thumbnail this tiny. This tiny. You could also lower the volume in your headphones so that their voice is no more than the sound of a mouse. Now, is this removing the personalization of the sale? Yes, but they have absolutely no idea that it's happening. So if you struggle to listen to your own advice, go ahead and make someone this small, make their volume this low. So that way, when you say it, it feels like it's a game. It feels like it's role play. It does not actually feel to you like it's real human to human. After just a couple times of doing that, you'll get over the hump and start listening to your own advice and doing the right thing. So that's strategy number two for making your prospect feel like you are not emotionally attached to the outcome. Step number three is work on being more rude. Now, I'm just kidding. Now, you don't actually want to be rude, but a lot of the things that we need to say, the things that we would say if we were selling to a cousin or a close friend are things that we, for some reason, because of this crazy power dynamic that they control the decision, we just don't say. We kind of let them off the hook over and over and over and over again. They said they were going to bring Janine because Janine holds the purse strings. Janine hasn't showed up for the third time. They said they were going to call Peter and Sarah because they demanded two customer references. It's been two weeks and they still haven't called them. My friends, these are the moments where you you 
know that in your personal life, you would call that person out. Hey, this is the second time you didn't show up for coffee. We're not making coffee plans anymore until you prove to me that you're actually gonna show up. But of course, we would never say that in the B2B capacity because we wanna be liked. If you have a half decent EQ about you, this is going to feel like it's kind of rude. It's not. On the other end of it, when you say to someone, hey, if Janine can't make the call today, let's go ahead and give you 50 minutes back. Maybe you can use that 50 minutes to coordinate with her on when we can chat again. Hey, there's 25 minutes left. And since you haven't called Peter or Sarah yet, why don't you use this time for that? And I would say that we should continue, but it really doesn't make sense because you said last call that without talking to two customer references, there's no way you're gonna move forward. So there's really nothing I could say today that's going to assist with that. So why don't you go ahead and talk to them? And if things are good, give me a call back. Don't worry about me. I have plenty of things on my plate today. These are the things that we would say in our personal life, but for some reason in B2B, we're just like, no, I can't do that. Well, actually some people do do that. And those are the people who are the top earners. And if you wanna be like them, make sure you start saying what needs to be said. Act really confused all the time. What do you mean act confused? I'm supposed to act super polished, aren't I? I'm supposed to act like a total professional. Like I really know what's going on. Yeah, but as it relates to their business issue, the pain point that you have hopefully drawn out of the conversations with them, you said that we're effectively losing about $1.2 million of operating capital every quarter. But if there's bigger fish to fry, you know, something where there's a $5 million a quarter problem and this is no longer a priority, of course, that makes sense. We can go ahead and put this on ice. Don't worry, I'm around. I have plenty of other people that are looking to solve their business issues. You can't offend me. Final step is for you not to squirm when they tell you they're not going to buy, but simply hold up a little bit of a mirror. I I'm glad you feel comfortable enough to tell me you don't want to move forward right now. And it's really not a big deal. You know, if getting that net promoter score up 20 points by the end of half two is no longer a priority, albeit you said that could increase your retention and then overall revenue by about two million a quarter, is not as big of a priority as something else that you have going on that's greater than a $2 million a quarter priority, there's really no reason for us to move forward. Thank you for your time up to this point. All I'm doing is acting like I'm not shook and I'm holding up a mirror and reminding them about the exact things that they said. And by doing that, it makes them realize, oh yeah, this really is a big priority. And whatever weird reason my boss told me we shouldn't buy this, I actually need to go back to that person and push back on them and get this deal back on track. This works all the time. And guess what? If it doesn't work, the deal was never real. This person never had enough pull. By simply holding up a mirror, putting it right back on them, two things will happen. They'll either go internally and get it back on track, or you'll find out the deal is never yours and save some time. So that is it, my friends. And just so you know, I'm the most attached person to a deal that there could possibly be on the planet. But my prospects never know that because I make sure I use strategies one, two, three, and four to make sure that they feel that I am no more committed to making a sale than they are actually getting the value out of the product. If they communicate to me that they're no longer interested in my value and they're zigging, I zig right with them. When they zig, I don't zag. I go right there with them and they find this to be surprising and it makes my skin crawl and I can't stand doing it. However, I know this is how I will make way more sales. That's it earners. As is always the case, we don't want your likes and we don't want your subscriptions. Okay, yes, we really want your likes and we really want your subscriptions, but only if we deserve them. So if we are able to help you move a deal forward with any of the strategies you learn from this channel, go ahead and give us a like. And of course, we only want your subscriptions if you feel that some of the advice from this channel actually helped you pull a deal across the finish line. This way, we're staying accountable here at On Target Earnings and you're giving us a feedback loop about whether or not the content we're creating is helpful. And all aspiring revenue leaders and current revenue leaders, head over to our Patreon channel where you can ask your employer if they're comfortable with you expensing a subscription there where we unpack the topics from the YouTube channel specifically for managers. Well, that's it. Thanks, earners. And remember, tough times and sales don't last, but tough sellers do. Go out there and have a great day.